Well, good afternoon, everyone. Bonjour tout le monde. Um, for Mr. Jolie, Melanie, as always, uh, I'm delighted to welcome you back to the State Department, the United States, and it is a great pleasure to continue our ongoing collaboration um, on so many issues that join our countries together. Um, as is fitting for such a close friend and ally, uh, the discussion we had today touched on an incredibly wide range of critically important issues that are having a real impact on the lives of our, our citizens, Canadians and Americans alike, as well as uh, people across the globe. Um, we, of course, discussed our united response to President Putin's war in Ukraine, including his latest shameless effort to legitimize his attempted land grab in Ukraine. No one is fooled by what Moscow has done. The world saw the way Russia conducted these so-called referendum, with Russian occupation forces going door to door and forcing Ukrainian citizens to cast their ballots at gunpoint. The entire process around these sham referenda was a complete farce. The United States does not and will never recognize any of the Kremlin's claims to sovereignty over parts of Ukraine that it seized by force and now purports to incorporate into Russia. As I said last week at the United Nations Security Council, this territory is and will remain Ukrainian. And Ukraine has every right to defend its land, to defend its people, and to take back the territory that Russia has seized from it. Canada and the United States, like so many nations around the world, see eye to eye on this. Uh, these are just the latest in a long line of actions by Russia since it launched its war of aggression against Ukraine that violate international law, that flout the principles of sovereignty and territorial integrity, which underpin the entire international order so necessary to keeping peace and security around the world. Uh, and all of this shows the Kremlin's utter contempt for the rights and the will of the Ukrainian people. Uh, I also made clear that when Russia made this move, the United States and our allies and partners would impose swift and severe costs on individuals and entities inside and outside of Russia that provide political or economic support to illegal attempts to change the status of Ukrainian territory. Today, we've done just that uh, in coordination with the European Union, and Canada is taking similar steps as well. Uh, we're also issuing a clear warning supported by G7 leaders. We will hold to account any individual, entity, or country that provides political or economic support for President Putin's illegal attempts to change the status of Ukrainian territory. In support of this commitment, the Departments of the Treasury and Commerce are releasing new guidance on heightened sanctions and export control risks for entities and individuals inside and outside of Russia that support in any way the Kremlin's sham referenda, purported annexation, and occupation of parts of Ukraine. Uh, we're also taking action today at the United Nations Security Council to hold Russia accountable for the sham referenda and the purported annexations. If Russia blocks the Security Council from carrying out its responsibilities, we'll ask the UN General Assembly, where every country has a vote, to make clear that it's unacceptable to redraw borders by force. Every country has a stake in condemning these steps. As UN Secretary General Guterres said this week, and I quote, the United Nations Charter is clear. Any annexation of a state's territory by another state resulting from the threat or use of force is a violation of the principles of the United Nations Charter and international law. The United States, Canada, and our other allies and partners will continue to assist Ukraine in the fight to defend its territory against Russian aggression. Uh, with new security assistance that we announced just this week, the United States has now committed approximately $16.9 billion in security assistance to Ukraine going back to January 2021. Um, in our meeting, the Foreign Minister and I discussed ways to continue supporting Ukraine uh, and our European allies as they prepare for a difficult winter ahead. Our commitment to Ukraine's sovereignty, its independence, its territorial integrity is steadfast. The United States and Canada will also continue to work together at the G7 to help the populations hardest hit by President Putin's war of choice, including by getting life-saving aid to the people most affected by the unprecedented global food crisis. And we'll continue to make crystal clear that 
we and our NATO allies are prepared to defend every inch of NATO territory. The United States and Canada are also standing together in responding to virtually every major global challenge that is having an effect on our people, just as we have for 150 years. Canada is a deeply valued ally and partner across the Arctic region uh, in the Arctic Council, uh, where we're working together to promote sustainable economic growth while also combating the climate crisis. In the coming weeks, the United States will release our Arctic strategy to further these goals, and we look forward to continuing to work closely with Canada to make them a reality. Uh, like the United States, Canada is both an Atlantic and Pacific nation, and we saw that last week at the General Assembly, where Canada joined both the Partners in Blue Pacific and the Strengthening Atlantic Cooperation ministerial meetings that we held. These initiatives will further our shared goals of a prosperous, resilient, and secure uh, ocean region in both the Atlantic and the Pacific. We're working together to end the HIV AIDS, malaria, and tuberculosis epidemics. Here too, we saw Canada's leadership on display at the General Assembly with the Prime Minister's exceedingly generous contribution of more than $900 million to the Global Fund in its seventh replenishment. Canada, Mexico, and the United States are partners in the USMCA, through which we're strengthening supply chains, supporting strong labor rights protections, and accelerating the clean energy transition across an increasingly integrated North America. Uh, since December, our countries have partnered to mobilize more than $294 million in international commitments for Haiti. We deeply appreciate Canada's leadership in launching the UN Basket Fund to improve citizen security and strengthen law enforcement in Haiti, an effort the United States is proud to support. In these extremely difficult times for the Haitian people, we're urging more partner nations to contribute to this vital cause. We also applaud Canada's leadership in launching the Declaration Against Arbitrary Detention in State-to-State -state Relations. This is bringing nations together to send the clearest possible message that the arbitrary detention of foreign nationals is unacceptable and governments that engage in this practice will face consequences. We discuss ways to deepen what is an already remarkably vibrant commercial and trade relationship to boost our collective competitiveness to create good paying jobs for people on both sides of our border. The United States and Canada are of course already each other's largest trading partners with over 10, uh, $2 billion excuse me, in goods and services that pass between us every single day. But we know we can do even more together to the benefit of our people. One way uh, to do that is through the Inflation Reduction Act, which provides more than $368 billion for clean energy technologies like electric vehicles and battery components that are manufactured in North America. It's the biggest, most ambitious climate investment in the history of our country. It offers a chance for us to deepen our economic integration and expand inclusive economic opportunity for our people. Uh, another way is through the Chips and Science Act, which will provide funds to develop resilient semiconductor supply chains in North America, uh, which are crucial for so many of the goods that we rely on, from smartphones to dishwashers to cars. Our semiconductor supply chains are already deeply interconnected, with U.S.-based companies like IBM and Skyworks conducting research, development, design, and packaging in Canada. It is hard to think of two countries that work together as closely and across as many areas as Canada and the United States. And it's not only because our fates and interests are so closely intertwined, but it's because we approach these challenges and opportunities from a place of shared values. More than ever, we are in this together. So, Melanie, as always, thank you for the visit, but most important, thank you for your, your partnership, thank you for your friendship uh, on a professional level, on a personal level. Uh, we're the closest of collaborators. It's something I deeply value and I'm grateful for every day. It's good to have you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Tony. Merci, Tony. It's really a pleasure for me to be here for my uh, 